So a couple of months ago, I did a video uh, just basically talking about the very basic top level stuff of how lesbians have sex. I didn't cover all of it because I couldn't possibly fit it all into one video, but it was extremely popular. It continues to be really popular on video on my channel. So I wanted to come back here and expand on it because there was so much more that I had to say. Anyone who has sex with women, this will apply to you. If you want to have sex with a woman and get her off, keep watching. Guys, gals, non-binary people, you're getting yourself in the mood. Don't want to be really curling them like this. Let me start that again. <laughs> Can I get anything wrong? The main thing that I really want to say before I go any further with this is how lesbians have sex is just how people have sex. I have been told so many times, particularly by men since I came out as a lesbian, that I'm not having real sex. And it's really quite interesting because the most extensive study ever done into orgasm and sexuality, like to date, and I've quoted it before on this channel, Regular subscribers will already be super familiar with this. I'm going to tell you about the orgasm gap. It tells us that straight men are getting off the most during coupled sex, 95% of the time. Straight women, women who are having sex with men, they are only getting off 65% of the time. That is really dire. And what's really interesting is that same study found that lesbians are getting off 86% of the time that we have sex. If you want to look at who is the group of people that are giving women the most orgasms, it's the lesbians. So if you came here because you are a lesbian who just wants more like tips on how to be better in bed, great. You're going to still get stuff out of this. If you came here because you're a bit bi curious or you're just sort of beginning to discover your queerness and you're just interested in like what it all means or maybe you're thinking about having sex for the first time with another woman also this is going to be great for you but i cannot stress enough that probably the group of people that are going to potentially get the most out of this video are going to be straight men so i'm going to let you in on my little trade secrets but before i do i have to give a big thank you and a huge shout out to today's video today's video i have to give a big shout out and a thank you to today's video sponsor moments condoms when you say the word pussy dick eating out all of the stuff i say i get demonetized so i don't make any money from this so the only way i'm actually able to stay afloat as a content creator is by amazing partners like moments condoms they are the only brand of condoms i use and people always seem to be shocked or confused about this but lesbians use condoms as well people of all genders should use condoms one, you can cut a condom in half and use it as a dental dam. So if you're giving oral sex to a casual partner, like eating some puss, it's going to help to prevent the spread of STIs. But also, guys, if you are using sex toys with your partner, like sometimes lesbians do, you should be covering those toys with a condom because if you're using them with multiple partners, you risk the spread of STIs. So yes, I absolutely use condoms. You know how they say the most effective things are often just the simplest or the most powerful things are often the simplest things nothing could be more true when it comes to lesbian sex i'm saying lesbian sex because you all came here for a video on lesbian sex but i am now going to just start saying sex between two women because i hope by this point you realize that all sex is sex and trying to put sex between lesbians under a different umbrella, like lesbian sex, like it's like some kind of a porn category. No, we are taught in sex education that sex is what happens when a penis goes into a vagina. And yet, while that is a great way for men to have an orgasm, and we also know that from the statistics on the orgasm gap that tell us men are coming like 95% of the time, that is a terrible way to get someone with a vagina to come. Like it's one of the worst ways. All of the research pretty much shows that it's only a quite a small segment of people with vaginas who are actually able to have an orgasm through just penetration alone. The vast majority of people with vaginas are getting to orgasm by having their clit stimulated. And this should be amazing news for men. Men should be happy about this. Why? Well, because this whole model of sex is this penetration focused thing where a penis goes into a vagina, 
which is also what leads us to believe, well, then isn't that what lesbians are doing? They're just using like a crappy stand-in for a penis. Like they're just putting something in and out of each other that looks like a penis. Why don't they just go sit on a penis? But lesbians aren't doing that most of the time. We're not doing it most of the time because that's not the secret to get a woman off. It feels good and it's fun and it can be a fun, enjoyable part of sex and so we can definitely work it in there. But also, like, even those of us who maybe do use a strap on sometimes, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but it's quite different to having sex with a man. Like, you can get it in any colour or shape. Um, it vibrates, usually lots of different vibrational patterns. Oh, and it's attached to a woman's body. So, like, boobies, you know? A bit different. But that's not how most of us are getting our lady to the big O. We're doing it via clitoral stimulation. And like I said, this should be great news to men because it doesn't matter whether your dick is hard or soft or it gets hard, then it goes soft, then it gets hard again. Doesn't matter. That's not the way you are going to get her off. By all means, do that. Like, have some penetrative sex if that's what she wants, if that's what you want, if that's what you two enjoy. But if you want to get her to climax, do what lesbians do and focus on the clitoris. One of the main ways we do that is through oral sex and something that men are really misled there's just been over the years like all of these like articles in magazines and stuff telling men just total misinformation about how to eat out a woman um and there's all these things about you know do the abcs with your tongue like change it up do all of these like different tongue gymnastics no no please stop that please People with vulvas are begging you to stop that. That is not how lesbians are doing it. We're doing it the way that we know feels good for a clitoris. How do we know a little bit more than you guys? Well, it's because we all have clitorises. So, you know, we play with them when we're on our own. We know what feels good. We know how to keep rubbing them in a way that gets us to climax. And what is best for a clitoris is repetition. I know maybe it's a little bit boring for you, but it's not going to be boring for her. That's how she's going to get off. If you want at the start to do some like different things, sure. But once she is relaxed, you just want to find that motion of the tongue that's working for her and do not change it. Because the way orgasm works for women is if we're really, really close and then you change something up and we can't come, we're not still really, really close. We start back at square one, which means if you were just eating us out for 15 minutes straight and we were just about to come and then you change something up with your tongue and now we've lost it, you're going back to that 15 minutes ago. Like you're gonna need another 15 minutes minimum. So if you don't wanna like get a really sore tongue and like tongue fatigue is a thing, let me tell you. When I first came out as gay and I was, I mean, I was having a hoe face. I don't know how else to say it. And my tongue got very sore. The frenulum, which is this little, if you just put your finger under your tongue, it's like the, the bit that like joins your tongue to the rest of your mouth. When you're eating pussy, you're licking quite a lot. You should actually be doing it. Actually, the best way to do it is imagining like you're licking a really delicious ice cream. So those big like, that was not sexy, but it will feel sexy. If you are doing that for ages, and particularly if you're doing it like, you know, multiple nights in a row, your frenulum can get really sore. There was a point where I, I feel like I had like sprained it or something. Like my tongue just did not feel good. The point is you want to work up some strength in your tongue because honestly, if you want to be really good in bed for a woman, you don't want her to feel rushed. And a lot of women have trouble relaxing in bed. And so maybe for the first like 10 minutes that you're going down on a woman, she's not even relaxed. Like she's not even in the ballpark of being able to think about having an orgasm. That first 10 minutes of licking her clit is literally just getting her to just get used to the motion, to relax and to feel comfortable and safe. There's been a lot of research done to show that women need to be deeply relaxed in order for an orgasm to happen. So lesbians tend to be, as a general rule, I'm, I'm generalizing, not all of them. Some lesbians don't even like eating pussy. Lesbians tend to be quite comfortable with eating pussy for like a long time because we know that there's nothing worse than having someone down there and thinking like, oh gosh, is it taking too long? Like, I feel bad. Like, are they suffocating down there? Are they getting bored? And so often what we'll do is we'll say to our partner like, oh, you don't have to keep going. Like, don't worry about it. It's taking me too long. And we're just so in our own head. So there is nothing better than 
having a woman go down on you and she's like, babe, don't worry about me. I've got all night down here. I can breathe fine. I will say if you're down there for more than 20 minutes, maybe come up for air because I mean, it's just, you're probably not going to get it to orgasm if you haven't been able to do it in 20 minutes. And it's probably just time to change things up. But, you know, being comfortable with staying down there longer is going to improve your chances. And the best way you can do that and make sure that you are breathing properly, get her lying on her back, knees up. You're going to be laying on your stomach in between and get yourself in a position so that you are comfortable. Often, like, I will put, like, a cushion or, a, like, a decorative pillow or something, like, under myself, not there, sorry, here, when I'm in the V. I will do that. And that gets me nice and comfy. And then the other thing you want to do is not have your nose pressed right against her vulva, like where her pubes are or if she doesn't have pubes, that front part. If you're pushing your nose into that while you're like licking, like you've got your whole face like in there, you're not going to be able to breathe. So you want to keep your nose up a little bit so that you can get the airflow in. And the other thing you can do is keep your mouth relaxed and a bit open because you can get like a little bit of air in that way as well. And look, if you need to come up for air every so often, do it just, you know, the more you practice, the better you will get at it. But that is one of the main ways that women get each other off. Right, so naturally I took it as an opportunity to get some wine. It's been a long day. I don't think people understand what's required to like just love women all day and like eat lots of pussy. No, who am I kidding? It's amazing. I have so many more things that I want to say on this topic about how women have sex with other women and what you can learn from them. So if you want more, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet because I have a whole channel of sex education where I get super real. And also, if you're able to, if you're still here, thank you that you're even still watching. You must really like me or like this channel. Either way, I'm very flattered. If you are still here, then you are a true believer and I would ask you to maybe consider supporting my Patreon. I will put it a link to it down in the description underneath this video. You can do it from just a couple of dollars a month. And when you subscribe for just a couple of dollars a month, you will get access to all sorts of exclusive content that I do not share anywhere else. I still get censored a lot on YouTube and on other platforms. There is no censorship on Patreon. I am really giving it to you in a way that I can't hear and that I don't hear or anywhere else. Plus, I have a Patreon-only podcast, so you can get access to that. I talk to like BDSM, dungeon mistresses, like sex therapists, you name it. It is really juicy. If a whole bunch of you subscribe and you all just put in a couple of dollars a month, that helps me to keep doing what I do. So consider it if you're able to. Consider the value that my work brings into your life and maybe assigning some kind of a monetary value to it. I feel like women are always taught like not to really know our value or ask for what we're worth. So I'm trying to work on that. And that's it. Peace out from me. Go do amazing lesbian sex things. <laughs> and I'll see you all in the next video. That is good. That is just nice.